Commissioner Patterson, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. It's good to talk to you again, and welcome to Houston. Good to be back, Bob. Good to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about the uh, the EPA and its role in Texas and what's going on in West Texas in particular with the, the drilling out there and the threats to stop that. Right. Can you tell us what you're doing as land commissioner in, in that area? Well, most of my activities have been focused on the uh, uh, impending designation of an endangered species by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department. The EPA is a problem, but that's more of a problem on emissions and coal plants and shutting down electric generation capacity in Texas, which could be a really difficult problem come August when we have uh, rolling blackouts or brownouts. But most of my efforts recently have been focused on the uh, a little lizard in far west Texas called the dune sagebrush lizard. It's only been a species since 1991. And now there's a couple of radical environmental groups uh, called the Wild Earth Guardians and the Center for Biodiversity that have sued the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department and forced them to queue up about 200 species here in Texas for consideration as endangered. And these, uh, these organizations I mentioned, the environmental guys, they're not really as much about uh, protecting species as, as they are a, about a war against hydrocarbons and exploration and production. Um, and so we are now uh, trying to stop the fish and wildlife. It's not the EPA, it's fish and wildlife from making this designation. Uh, there's a couple of plans in the mix that would allow oil and gas operators to mitigate uh, and not have a designation as endangered because the Permian Basin, which is you know out there in far west Texas, where a substantial amount of production uh, between the Bakken Shale and the Permian Basin, one of those two is the most prolific lower 48 oil and gas production in the United States. And when we look at the potential in the next 20 years where Texas and the United States might even be energy independent because of new production, a threat such as a lizard that is, there's no evidence saying it's endangered is a problem. And of course, my, one of my main roles has been to try to raise the awareness of this threat and I managed to get on Fox and Friends in the morning, Nightline, uh, CBS, and NBC Evening News because I coined a phrase that raised the interest. And I said, here in Texas, we describe this as reptile dysfunction. Now, I know it's, I know it's kind of, you know, it's whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, kind of a tawdry. But, you know, you say things to get the attention of the press and get them working on your side. So as a result of that label, we were able to get on all these news uh, programs. I even took CBS reporters and flew them in my little airplane around West Texas and landed in some out of the way dirt strips and uh, managed to look at some of these lizards. There's no evidence that they're in danger. Uh, and we're trying to stop that designation. And I think we may be able to do that. Is there anything the general public can do to help with that? Is it a member uh, yeah, uh, of Congress? Uh, uh, yes, uh, call your member, write your member of Congress and other members of Congress. Uh, I think virtually all the Republicans in Texas are opposed to the designation. And I think many of the Democrats in Texas are opposed to the designation. But it wouldn't hurt to uh, you know, reinforce that. Uh, another letter to somebody who's already opposed to it cannot hurt. It may increase their opposition and remind them to go talk to their colleagues that may not have seen the light yet. So that's positive. Yeah, do that. You mentioned energy independence for the United States, and Texas would certainly play a key role yes. in that. Where do we stand in terms of water and electricity and things like that? That's a really good point. I mean, we, everybody's focused on the price of gasoline, i.e., therefore, they're focused on oil and gas and focused on eliminating the restraints that oil and gas has to exploration and production and the federal uh, restraints particularly. But there are another two issues here in Texas that are extremely important and very few people are talking about it. I mean, as you know, I'm running the Republican primary in 2014 for lieutenant governor. And as Republicans, we talk a lot about gut issues that, that I'm very conservative on, you know, whether I'm pro-life and pro-Second Amendment. But there's other issues that don't have that sizzle that we need to talk about as well. Availability of water, availability of, uh, of electricity. Uh, and those things are both in jeopardy here in Texas. We're growing at about 1,300 to 1,500 net population gain per day. And our water supply uh, projected is not going to be able to sustain that population growth. Uh, this last summer in August, we were on the verge of uh, brownouts or rolling blackouts because of the heat. 
And believe it or not, uh, one of the things that saved us was wind power on the Texas coast. The wind was blowing in that time of the year on the Texas coast. The wind was very, pro, you know, very strong. So we we avoided that. But we're reaching. I think we did 68,000 megawatts set a peak demand record, and we're reaching up to where our capacity is rapidly uh, coincident with our demand. We've got to have more generation and transmission. More transmission. Water is another issue. Uh, they're kind of interrelated because you have to have water to have uh, generation. You've got to have cool these plants. Um, we have water issues, whether we use groundwater, which I'm a proponent of, and those aquifers that are replenishable and recharging. Uh, how do we move water around? Interbasin transfers, uh, desal is another viable option, and we need to be talking about those. They're not the you know, things we win primaries on, but they're things that are very important to whether our kids and our grandkids will have a job in Texas in 20 or 40 years. Well, thank you for taking the time today to talk to our readers here at Texas GOP Vote, and we wish you the best of luck in your, your campaign as that develops over the next couple of years. And yep. It's uh, kind of interesting being out so early on this, and we're glad to talk to you about it. All right, good. Thanks a lot. Right, thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it.